Welcome back to our webinar on perspective. In this video we're going to just look a little bit further on our principles of two-point perspective. So we're just going to kind of practice um, that or put it into a different scenario. Um, in the last video we had seen how to locate the vanishing point for a rectangular prism where we had two separate directions and how by looking parallel to each direction where our view hit the picture plane, we were able to locate our vanishing point. Well, in this question we're going to do pretty much exactly the same thing, only it's just to show you that just because it's called a two-point perspective doesn't mean that you're limited to just two vanishing points. Um, the more directions you have, or the number of directions you have, is going to determine the number of vanishing points. So just because it's two-point perspective I mean, means you can still have three, four, five, or an infinite number of vanishing points. So if we look at our object, like so. Here we can see we have a pentagonal prism, so here's our pentagonal prism in 3D, and here it is in plan view looking from above, and we can see clearly that we have more than two directions on this object. We have edges going in this direction, this direction, this direction, this direction, and this direction. So we have five distinct directions um, to deal with in this question. So we could have five vanishing points. In this case we only need four um, to actually complete the exercise, but you can have as many vanishing points as you have directions. So we're just going to, I suppose, reinforce what we had seen in the last exercise, uh, last video. So what we're going to do is we're just going to show you how to locate the vanishing point for each of our directions. So we're just going to start off by highlighting each of the directions. So if you take, say, our direction number one, which we just changed to a green line, that's one direction. So we have to look parallel to that from our spectator like we had seen before, where that hits the picture plane is going to locate our uh, vanishing point, project up into our horizon line. If the line is level, that is to say, isn't sloping upwards or downwards, the vanishing point will always be on the horizon line. We'll talk more about what happens if we're dealing with sloped lines later on, but for all these exercises here at the moment, all our lines are level. So they will have to be, the vanishing point will have to be located on the horizon line. So there's our vanishing point for any line moving in this green direction. So on our object there's our green two lines moving in that parallel direction. So we look parallel to it, VP1 is where our gaze hits our horizon line or on our picture plane. And I said the reason for that is that the spectator height is the same height as our horizon line. Because it's a level line, whatever height our spectator is, it's going to be the same as our horizon line. So this has to hit our horizon line. So that's our vanishing point for direction number one. Then if we go and take, say, direction number two, now in red, we do exactly the same thing. A new direction means from our spectator we look parallel to it, where that crosses the picture plane, project it up, locating as our second vanishing point. So exactly the same in our 3D view, VP2. And we just continue this process. So here we have our third direction here in pink. Again, new direction, we look parallel to our new direction, onto the picture plane and project it up onto our horizon line will give us our third vanishing point. So there it is in 3D as well. Same thing applies with our fourth direction, so here we have it in yellow. So parallel to it onto the picture plane, project it up and we have our fourth vanishing point. Now I'm just going to keep at four vanishing points here. I could go and find a vanishing point for this guy here, but what I'll find is it's so shallow we'll end up running way, way, way off the page and we don't actually need to locate it anyway, so we have enough information here to complete the exercise. So like our last example and all the examples that we've dealt with so far, we look at our object and we see is there any of the object on our picture plane? So here we can see our front edge here is on the picture plane, which means it won't be smaller or larger, it won't be reduced or enlarged. It's going to be the same height in our perspective view as it is in our original view. So there's our point here like that. So we're going to just take him straight up into our perspective view. So the true height, the height that we have on our actual question, is the height that we're able to come up here. So starting on the ground, because our object is on the ground, so it's going to be in contact with the ground line. So there's our ground line there, and there's our original height moving up like that. So 
to draw our lines moving back into our distances, we simply join it to the corresponding vanishing point. And it, it is kind of handy to add a bit of colour, even on your own drawing, just so that you know exactly which vanishing point. As you go along, you will find you'll have quite a lot of lines. So it's no harm just to separate out your vanishing points, but just using a little splash of colour, just so when you look down, you know, if you're under pressure for time in an exam or that, you look down, you know the green line, there's your parallel line, there's your vanishing point. Or you can even draw him in with a green dot, just if you're um, in any kind of kind of doubt. So we want to move in our green direction here, so we go to VP1, so there's our zero line moving off into the distance in that direction, there's our top point here moving off in that distance uh, in that direction. So there it is in our 3D view. And then we to locate our position, so that deals with our height. To locate our position, we take our corner, project it down to our spectator, so it crosses the picture plane, project it up, and there's our side drawn in. So exactly the same thing here, joining our edge to our spectator, where it crosses the picture plane, gives us the position for our points. So there and there. So that's our side drawn in there. Exactly the same thing with our new position. So we here we have our red position here, so that goes to VP2 and we locate the position for our back edge here. So we have the height still found, now we locate the position, completing the side, exactly the same in our 3D view. Our front leading edge goes to back to VP2 and we join our edges to our spectator where it crosses the picture plane, gives us the location of the back points. So there's our second side. Uh, we do exactly the same with our diff second, our next direction. So we're going to take the pink direction here. So new direction, we can just take him straight to our VP3. So if you're in any doubt which vanishing point, pink direction, parallel to it from our spectator, that's how we found vanishing point three. We locate the position for the back. We take it down where it crosses the picture plane, bring it up, and that's our position located there. Exactly the same with our yellow direction here. We go from our edge here to VP4 this time, and we locate the position of the back corner. So that's our position of our back corner like so. Exactly the same over here, VP4. We join from our back corner to our spectator, and there is our edge like so. And then the reason we didn't need to find our vanishing point for this edge here is because we actually have enough information now just to join those two dots to give us that back edge. So we didn't need to locate an extra vanishing point. So we've saved ourselves maybe a little bit of work there. But that's the completed object. So here we have the 2D version, here we have the 3D version of the completed object. So it's exactly the same idea as our two-point perspective, only just to show that you can do it with any direction you want. So no matter how many directions you have, you can find your vanishing point for it in exactly the same way. Take the direction and look parallel to it, where it hits the picture plane, bring it up onto a horizon line. If the line is level, it will be on the horizon line. If not, we, as I said, we'll deal with that in a future video. So again, hopefully it's been some help to you. Thank you very much.